Hi everyone, I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane, and today we're going to discuss occupational or on-the-job exposure to asbestos and the health risks that come with working with asbestos. But first, a quick overview of asbestos and why it was used. Asbestos is the name given to a group of six naturally occurring minerals. In their natural form, they look like this, just a rock. But when these rocks are crushed and processed, they could be turned into strong, lightweight fibers that don't burn, don't conduct electricity, and don't conduct a lot of heat. This is what these fibers look like. These fibers can be turned into thousands of different products, including insulation, fireproof clothing, ceiling and floor tiles, and even fireproof papers and felts. Asbestos was cheap to mine, easy to manufacture with, and up until the 1970s, asbestos was in thousands of industrial and household products. We stopped using asbestos because of the serious health risks to working with asbestos. We'll talk more about them later, but asbestos can cause a number of serious breathing diseases and cancers. There is no known safe level of exposure to asbestos, meaning that even small exposures can sometimes make people sick. But most people who get sick from asbestos exposure had large exposures to asbestos, typically on the job. Some jobs carried high risks of asbestos exposure and therefore high risks of developing asbestos-related illnesses. People who worked as operators in a utility company or in a large plant that provided its own utility services, like refineries would often have their own power plants. Workers who worked as operators had a great deal of exposure in those environments because of the high prevalence of the usage of asbestos insulation. The utility industry, of course, generates power, and most power generation involves large amounts of heat. They do coal, they do steam, they do various web ways of, of generating power, and all of that requires insulation. So one of the earliest industries to adopt asbestos was the power generation, the utility industry, to keep all of their power plants insulated, uh, to build inside of the kilns and the furnaces and the ovens that would be used throughout these, these processes. And the people who would work on those, the operators, would get exposure every day. And the exposure could come not just from their daily operations tasks, but from working around other workers who maybe pipe fitters or boiler makers or welders who would come in and disturb the asbestos insulation. And then they would breathe it in. So even if the people aren't doing the work directly themselves, the operators were responsible for supervising the workers who were. Another way people would have been exposed in the utility industry was in the uh, water utilities. The majority of cement pipe in the United States at one point for carrying water was asbestos cement pipe. And of course, when you work on that pipe, if you drill it or you cut it or you have to do anything to manipulate it, you could release asbestos into the air. So people who worked in power or water utilities would have had a good amount of exposure and the operators would have as well, even if they weren't doing it themselves. And for the large plants, the chemical plants, the refineries, places like that, those places are so large and have such high requirements for power, they often had to generate power themselves. So those people would get a double whammy of asbestos exposure. You've got the asbestos products that are being used inside of a power plant, and also the different asbestos products that would be used at a refinery or a chemical plant. So operators in those environments were probably the operators that had the highest amounts of exposure of all operators. We've represented large numbers of operators from the chemical plants all throughout the United States and have heard similar stories about how asbestos was used and how they were exposed. And we found the ways to prove that just because they weren't doing the work themselves, but were supervising the workers who were, they were still exposed to asbestos. And that would be because asbestos can travel so far once it's in the air. So operators both in the power generating field and outside of it, both would have had large amounts of exposure to asbestos. People exposed to asbestos, especially those who worked with asbestos on the job, are at an elevated risk of developing a number of asbestos-related diseases. Before we talk about those diseases, let's take a look at this medical animation that illustrates how asbestos exposure can cause diseases. When we breathe in foreign particles, we cough to expel them from the airway. But asbestos fibers are tiny, indestructible needles that can embed themselves in the lungs or the pleura damaging the tissue and causing hardened scars. In response, the body sends macrophages to digest and expel the asbestos fibers, but the sharp asbestos fibers pierce the macrophages, killing or warping them. This causes the macrophages to send the wrong chemical messages that cause the growth of carcinomas. Asbestos fibers also release free radicals that further damage the lung tissue and cause diseases to form. Not all of this damage is immediately visible, but 
over 20 to 50 years, asbestos can cause breathing problems like asbestosis, as well as mesothelioma and lung cancer. Similar processes occur when a person swallows asbestos fibers, and those fibers can cause throat cancer, stomach cancer, and colorectal cancer. No disease is more strongly associated with asbestos exposure than mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is a very rare and aggressive cancer that is caused almost exclusively by exposure to asbestos. This particular type of cancer affects the mesothelium, which is a thin membrane that surrounds many of our internal organs. There are only about 3,000 cases of mesothelioma diagnosed in this country every year, and our office has been very successful in recovering compensation for our clients who develop that disease. Asbestos exposure has also been proven to cause lung cancer, although as you know, there are many other potential causes of lung cancer besides asbestos exposure, such as smoking. What you might not know is that individuals who smoke and who are exposed to asbestos are at a much higher risk of developing lung cancer than non-smokers who are exposed to asbestos. We've been able to recover millions of dollars on behalf of lifetime smokers who developed lung cancer after working with asbestos, so don't worry that if you smoked, you wouldn't be eligible for compensation. The typical way that individuals develop an asbestos-related disease is by breathing asbestos fibers. For that reason, it's no surprise that asbestos has been proven to cause throat cancer. But asbestos fibers are also harmful when swallowed. That's why it's also been proven that asbestos exposure can cause stomach cancer and colon cancer. We've represented a good number of people who develop these diseases, and we've obtained substantial compensation for them. So asbestos exposure can cause the rare type of cancer mesothelioma, as well as more common cancers such as lung, throat, stomach, and colon cancer. Asbestos exposure can also cause another serious illness that is not cancer, asbestosis. As you can probably guess from the name, asbestosis is caused only by the inhalation of asbestos dust. Asbestosis is a breathing disease that destroys critical lung tissues needed to breathe and process oxygen. Asbestosis is rarely fatal anymore, but it can be. We've been privileged to represent the families of a number of people who did in fact die from asbestosis, but the average case of asbestosis is nowhere near fatal. If you were exposed to asbestos on the job and developed an asbestos-related illness, our law firm can help you and your family obtain the compensation you're owed. We can obtain compensation from asbestos trusts, we can file an asbestos lawsuit on your behalf, and we can help you obtain any asbestos disability benefits you're entitled to. Let's talk a little more about those options. The primary focus of our law firm is obtaining compensation from the various asbestos trusts that were set up by the courts to compensate people who were injured by asbestos. There are currently about 50 active asbestos trusts that are paying claims. Obtaining settlements from the trust does not require filing a lawsuit or going to court. Most of our clients qualify for payments from many trusts, often dozens. We're typically able to begin obtaining settlements within six months, with settlements coming sometimes as quickly as 60 days for individuals who have mesothelioma. Settlement sizes depend on how serious a person's medical condition is. The sicker the person, the higher the settlement amount. We can also assist with filing an asbestos lawsuit. Every state has different laws regarding asbestos lawsuits, but there are some general principles that are pretty consistent across the country. Lawsuits take longer than trust claims, but lawsuits can result in substantially higher settlements or jury verdicts. Most asbestos lawsuits settle before trial, but some cases do have to go all the way to a judge and jury. Asbestos lawsuits can be against any person or company who exposed someone to asbestos. Some states allow asbestos lawsuits against a worker's direct employer, while others require the injured worker to file a worker's compensation claim, which we're also experienced in doing. Finally, our office could help with asbestos disability claims. There are two types of asbestos disability claims, claims through the Social Security Administration and claims through the Veterans Administration. Eligibility for both types of claims are based upon whether a person's asbestos-related illness leaves them medically unable to work. And of course, Veterans Administration claims are only available to veterans. If you or someone in your family has developed an asbestos-related illness, the law only gives you a certain amount of time to bring a claim for compensation. If you wait too long, you won't be able to. So please don't wait too long to contact me or we may not be able to help. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll consider giving us the opportunity to help you and your family.